Huhu, and welcome to the last installment of the Vlogmas tag. Ah, we've got a video for we like voyage. Check it out. Then another video for L like LGBTQ plus. O and G, O for oldie but goodie, and G for gift. So now we are in the last installment with M, A and S. M stands for mass market paperbacks and I loved them when I was younger because I love pulp literature and trashy literature in general and mass market paperbacks are the way to go there. But aside from mass market paperbacks, there is another form of pulp literature in German and that's literature which is just in a notebook. There are barely 30 or 40 pages and it's more novella and the main character has mostly an English name like John Sinclair the ghost hunter or Perry Roden the astronaut or something like this but these are purely German stories but they are in the Wild West or in England or in the cosmos. <laughs> they are great, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't read any printed works anymore. I only read electronical books now. So the mass paperback market is a thing from the past. Next letter. A is for all the family. This letter was one of the reasons I started doing this tag because the reading and writing history in my family is just uh, special. Yeah? In my family there were many uh, readers. Let's start with the side of my mother. There, my mother reads no, self-help books, sometimes a novel. Uh, she doesn't read as much as my father, but she reads now and then and mass market paperbacks. Uh, my grandmother on this side didn't read, but for uh, self-help books and books pertaining to her interest, like garden or design. But my grandfather read a lot. He read this, he called it one shot, seven hits books. They were German novellas. It's a translation would be dime novellas because you can get them for a dime. There were westerns with cowboys and uh, Native Americans and the MC shoots once and uh, ten evil guys all dressed in black fall down dead or wounded. <laughs> so I, I really love this kind of literature and I really wonder why it's so gripping? Because it is gripping. I was never once bought by it. I haven't read that much of the lowest category, the dime novels, but they are, they are formulaic and it must have been a good formula. Like uh, McDonald's food. It's, it's absolutely fast food written fast food. The other side of my family, my father, my father does read a lot and he visits the library a lot. 
So um, my parents do own a lot of books, but they gave many books away and they only own a lot of books because they were victims of the Bertelsmann Book Club. That was a kind of scheme in the 80s and they signed everyone up for getting one book for free or in the month or in the week, I don't know. And so if you visit German baby boomers, they all have the same kind of books on their shelves because these were all the Battlesman book club um, books and they were all victims. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, pretty funny because when I visit the um, parents of friends of mine and I look at their, their bookshelves and I know half of the books because I read them um, from my parents. Uh, how do you call the conversation with the flowers and the bees? In German it's Aufklärung, which uh, translates as enlightenment, <laughs> but I don't think <laughs> in this particular case. <laughs> so, you know, I never had this uh, bee and flower talk with my parents, or not in that I remember. I read books about um, the mechanical part, like where the babies come from. But uh, there are some of the details, the non-biological details, which aren't mentioned. And uh, this knowledge got conveyed in my generation by Bravo. But I didn't read the Bravo. I read books of Heinrich. I read books by one of the guys who wrote them before the AIDS crisis and after or during the hippie time. So my bees and flowers impression is very, very skewed. That's a topic. Good. So my father reads a lot, uh, two books per week, and my grandmother read even more books. She visited the same library my father goes to and I went to as a child as well and I basically read the whole uh, children's section and a tiny bit of the adult section and their whole bookshelf for sci-fi and fantasy. And my grandmother was such a good customer at the library that she got all the new books first. Sometimes they weren't even protected. She got them before the librarian um, even put all the stickers on them. <laughs> uh, and my grandfather read only magazines, but his, his brother and many of his relatives were writers. His brother was a famous journalist, famous it's maybe, I don't know, but he was a big figure in the time after the Second World War in establishing a free press in Germany. He wrote one of the biographies from um, Rowold, their, uh, the most common famous person biographies in Germany and he wrote on the other, other side of the liver sausage border. Yeah, and here starts the craziness. <laughs> yeah, my family is this line of the family they are they were butchers and the tradition was to that the first son goes to university and the butchery is inherited by one of the other sons and i am from the line from the i'm the first daughter of the butcher line so my brother is the one 
who dropped the ball. I was totally entitled to go <laughs> uh, to university, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this this rule isn't for daughters. Maybe it was the problem that my parents didn't have a second son, but um, my father uh, wasn't that keen on continuing the tradition. And uh, I'm the descendant of a line from uh, 125 years of butchery. So, and intellectuals, who came from that butchery line. And those intellectuals still had the, let's call it the spark of butchery <laughs> in their veins. So they wrote books like On the Other Side of the Liver Sausage Border <laughs> and printed poems of farthing, farthing, you know all that <laughs> thing, <laughs> yeah, that was the um, brother of my grandpa who informed the German public about poems about farthing. Yeah, and my uh, grandmother her father was a scholar of languages, but she worked as a butcher's wife for 60 years or for 40 years. Yeah? And this is the interesting dichotomy, dichotomy? Dichotomy. The interesting, the interesting intellectual tension in my family that we are on one hand butchers with a butcher's mentality and we butcher our way through literature and through the higher fields and spheres of intellectual thinking processes but we are scholars and we know all the fancy stuff we just give a fart or several fart about it <laughs> yeah so my grandmother was already old and very ill she had a brain tumor and she read this book it's quite the it has quite a few pages and it isn't an easy book. I haven't read it whole, but uh, I knew enough about this book. Yeah, Maybe not enough, I don't know. When do you know enough about something? So um, she read it and uh, she complained to me, oh, and this book is too hard for me. Yeah. And I totally agreed with her because she was over 70, had a brain tumor and was ill. And this book has dream sequences, you know, these fancy dream sequences. And I just want to say what I think about dream uh, sequences. Nothing good, I can assure you. But then she said, yeah, but then I put a pillow below it and it was fine. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of my favorite anecdotes of my grandmother because, yeah, my family, we aren't discouraged by hard books with fancy dream sequences. All we need is a soft pillow and then the book isn't hard anymore. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, and I thought that this book is the same than the creator of the tech, Britta Böhler, has on her shelf. But I'm not so sure anymore. I remembered it being blue, okay, and the book on Britta's shelf is blue as well but 
it can be that this book had a blue envelope once. Yeah. So I'm really not sure. Printed in Germany, 1997. Yeah. Britta Böhler have to answer this because she has the book still in the envelope. So I don't know if it's, if it's the same or not. Yeah, that was um, A, all the family. I mean, I can say so much more about books and the weird intellectual traditions of my family. But I, but there will be other chances, I'm sure of it. So we go to the last letter, S like Santa, um, the books on my Santa wish list. And there are no books on my Santa wish list. There is uh, more lightning, <laughs> sorry, more lighting, like my beauty light, my pretty little beauty light doesn't make me, it still makes me beautiful, but I think oh, maybe with more lights I will be even more beautiful. Who knows? Then I want Microsoft Office because my current spreadsheet is with OpenOffice and it hasn't, I don't know the names of the formulas, like I know with Excel and yeah. And I want to have um, Microsoft Word because of the editing feature. You can follow the edits and reject them and confirm them and this is pretty awesome yeah this is my christmas wish list there was a mic on the wish list but i already have it great i wish you all a happy christmas and i tag antesa for this vlogmas tag Thank you for watching, subscribe, like and do the YouTube chess and see you soon.